Good morning, and welcome to Concordia Lutheran Church's virtual worship. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. It's great to be back with you all this week. I uh, had a great vacation, and we had a great, some great family time and some time away to be refreshed and rejuvenated. This morning, we are reminded by the words of the psalmist, From you, O Lord, comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. The descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to the people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The psalmist reminds us this morning of the central place that God plays in our lives. There's many parts in the Bible that we hear and they sound like threats. I suppose the psalm in some ways this morning could sound like a threat. For example, for dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nation. We could read that and think, well, those, who, those nations and those people who don't know God are in trouble. But what I hear in all those things are an invitation, an invitation to remember God and live in the truth of God's love and grace, an invitation to live a greater life than we think is possible, an invitation to give thanks and praise to God for the lives we have rather than the lives we wish we had. God is always inviting us into that inner world of great things. God is always hoping that we remember just how good God is to us. God wants us to realize that our lives are always tied to God's, that in good and bad times, we are tethered to God, and that God is acting in ways that, well, we can't always see, but they are ways of grace and love. I was thinking this week about, what, uh, about our stories, your story, your life, and the one thing I hope to do as pastor always is to help to pee, help people to see God in their stories, in their lives. Help people to remember that every day that we are alive, God is acting in our lives. So how is God involved in your story that you tell about yourself and your life? And that's what we'll be talking about this morning. I'd like to thank Jim Doyle for being here to record our worship and Heather for being here to sing and Janet for playing. We begin this morning with our gathering song, Awake, O Sleeper, Rise from Death, number 552, 452.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our gospel for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. God removes every branch in me and bear, that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. So it has been over ten months since I last took a vacation. I just felt uh, I needed to be here on Sundays during the pandemic. I felt people needed to hear the good news. People needed consistency and a time of uncertainty. And I don't regret that decision one bit. However, and I know that many of you put off your vacations during the pandemic, but I will tell you that I did need a vacation pretty badly. I could feel it in my, in my bones. I needed to let go, to relax, I need to stop my brain for a little while. I need to unplug. In fact, on our vacations, we had a whole day where everyone in our family put our phones away. We did not look at them for a whole day. We did not make calls, answer texts, go on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok. We didn't even use our phones to look up directions or order food. Our oldest child said to me during that day, you know, it isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I can actually live without my phone. And that was a great lesson, not only for my children, but for me too. I needed reminding that the world does not revolve around me. That the world will not fall apart just because I'm not around, or I'm not available for immediate consultation. I am no, in no means an anti-technology person. I think technology is important. It's part of our human experience. However, I do think our phones often give us a false impression that we are the center of all things. It tells, our phones tell us that we're so important that we always have to look at it. We cannot know our worth by just being. We have to know how many likes we get or how many people comment. We feel important because things cannot possibly go on unless I'm there to comment or like something. And the same is true for our work. Vacations remind us that the world keeps spinning on without us. That God's good news will get preached even without me. That there are other churches, other pastors, just as good as I am at doing this work. The church does not rise and fall based on me. Jesus is in this morning in our gospel reminds us of this truth. That we are the branches. We're just there to hang out. To abide in him. And that Jesus is the vine that does all the work. The vine provides the water and the nutrients that feed the branches and produce the fruit. We don't produce the fruit. It is the spirit, the word of God, and the creation of God in us that produces fruit. The world spins and God's word is there in the ground, in the roots that dig down to find water, in the sun and the rain that God provides. We're just the branches. We're just here to be us, to hang around. I know we like this idea that we're all very self-sufficient people, that we made our lives by what we did through our hard work, our discipline, our dedication. 
And as a pastor, I have to say, I fall into that trap often. I always think, oh, this is me making all this stuff go. And then I'll screw up, I'll make a mistake, and I'll realize this is all by the grace of God. We are not self-sufficient people, not, not if we are people of faith. We are people who only rely on the vine for our water and nutrients. We rely on God's word reminding us again and again that God loves us and is with us. We rely on God's word to give us courage and strength. And we rely on God's word to get us through each day. I don't know about you, but in the background of my brain is running a constant tape loop. And, what it, and it's what makes me anxious in my life because the voice on that tape is saying to me that I'm not good enough. I don't work hard enough, I'm not smart enough. And it's what makes me work harder or makes me crazy when I realize all the things in life that I've left undone. Or what makes me jealous of another person who's smarter than me or more successful than me. I mean, why can't I have a congregation filled with thousands of people? Why can't I write a book that changes the church? Why can't I? Yeah, you get the point, right? I bet you have your own voice. It tells you all the things you can't do or won't do. It tells you that you're no good and that there's only, the only way out is to do more work or work harder. I hope, though, that you also hear God's voice. That's the voice that should tell you that you are plenty, that God made you out of love, that God gave you your own unique sets of gifts and talents, that you don't have to work harder or try more. All you have to do is be a branch. Sit there and allow God to fill you up. Fill you with all God's love and grace. Fill you up with the best wine. Fill you up with a banquet that God has made for you out of love. That is how God is involved in our lives all the time. God is the other voice. God is the voice that calms our anxiety, our fears. God is the voice that brings us peace and then allows us to be that for other people. Jesus tells us today, all we have to do is be the branch. I know it appears that he also says that he might cut some people off. God removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. As I said at the beginning, we're all, we are always reading judgment into what is really about growth. God provides in our lives growth. God prunes the branches so that we can grow in our relationship to the vine. It's merely about remembering that God is always part of our lives, that our stories intertwine with God's. We are God's people, and God is our life. God is the voice that we want to hear every day. It's the voice that tells us that we are loved, forgiven, and set free. On that Wednesday of vacation, as we're having our day without our phones, after that conversation with my oldest child, I was thinking about how much I needed God. I need to hear God every day tell me everything's going to be okay. Because I will tell you that a lot of days, it doesn't feel that way to me. Every day, I feel like something's a little bit out of control. I feel a little bit inadequate to solve the problems of the world. I feel that I haven't done enough that day, that I could have done more. I could have spoken words that were more healing. I could have helped someone else in some way. I could have been a better pastor, husband, father, son, brother, uncle, friend. This is the voice in my head telling me it wasn't enough. But you see, without the phone, without the work on that Wednesday, all I had was a day with my wife and kids. All I had was the day that was before me. And I'm gonna tell you this, it was enough. Because in that day, there was God's love and grace. It was the day that God had made for me. In that day on vacation, away without a phone, I heard God's voice whisper in my ear that I was loved and I was enough. And this morning I want to tell all of you, you are enough and you are loved. I hope you hear that voice. I hope, you, <clears throat> I hope that you can stay on the vine and that you simply learn to be a branch because the world does not depend on you but on God who created you, loves you, and continues to sustain you. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn of the day. We know that Christ is raised, number 449. i
During this Easter season, as we celebrate our faith in the risen Christ, we come together to confess our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You rule the nations with justice and love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those who are called to serve. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You have loved us so that we can love others. We pray for all in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. We especially pray this day for Edward, Emma, Dorothy, Rebecca, Alva, Gretchen, Adeline, Karen, Bill, Teresa, Kathy, Kim, Ken, Sal, Valerie, Florence, Teresa, Vicki, Gail, Thomas, Ernie, Karen, Yosemite Lutheran Church, Karn, Carol, Nicole, Carol, John, Dean, Mike, Helen, Barbara, Bill, Liesel, and Karen. We pray for those who grieve, the family and friends of Joe, Kathleen, Paul, Tim, Dick, Judy, Grace, and Eric. Remember our homebound, Betty Lee and Florence, and our men and women in the service, Isaac, Gus, Daniel, and Joshua. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You gather, you gather us with all the saints by the power of your spirit. With them, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope here we may offer our own prayers aloud or in our hearts. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May all of us be the branches. May we know the wonderful love and grace of the vine that fuels our lives. May we know that God is part of our story. That God's grace is there every day to give us strength to meet the days ahead. As Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said, God does not give us everything we want but God does fulfill God's promises, lead us, leading us along the best and straightest path to God's self. Or C.S. Lewis, we may ignore, but we, cannot, 
but we can nowhere evade the presence of God. The world is crowded with God. God walks everywhere incognito. Or Mark Yaknali, ultimately grace can never be earned. Like all gifts, it can only be received, requiring that I simply open my hands and trust. Or Philem Doherty, the gospel of grace leaves no room for boasting. And if we do not let that, the truth, that grace is unmerited, that God is that generous, have full reign in our hearts, then we will always, then we will always seek to add our two, two pence worth. I will leave you with this lyric from this new song I was listening to on vacation by the Mighty Mighty Boston's. They can shake the, they can shake down the mountains, the hills can be removed, but love and faith won't be replaced. And even in our sleep, a pain that we cannot forget falls drop by drop upon the heart until, in our own despair and against our will, comes wisdom through the awful grace of God. And now, may our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the, the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let us sing together our ascending song, Shout to the Lord.
want to thank you for joining us this morning. I hope you found something here this morning that will spiritually help you in your upcoming week. Uh, if you'd like to support our ministry, you can do that by clicking on our PayPal account link in the comments section. Once again, I'd like to thank Jim for being here to record, Heather for singing, and Janet for playing. And now go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.